In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to set up Dreamweaver to work with our web server. When you first open Dreamweaver, you should see the option at the top in the menu bar to go to Sites. You're going to go to Site, New Site, and you'll first give it a site name. This can be anything you want, and it can have spaces in it. So I'm just going to call it Mary's Practice, because I will know I can delete this later. Then I would pick a folder that it will point to. And for mine, I'm just going to point to my syllabi folder. It doesn't really matter. It's not an actual site that I'm using, but it would let me upload any of my syllabi from here. The part that you really account, care about as a student, again, you can name it whatever you'd like, and your local site folder should be to the site that you have for class. You should have created a folder for your web design class. So you'd point to that. And then the server is the critical point. You're going to add a server, and what you name it again is to help you remember which server it is, so that if you're taking more than one class, you can set up a server for each class, which I find useful so I don't accidentally write over my files. So my server name would be the DGM 235 web design and again I'm using spaces here because this is just for me to keep track of it it's not used anywhere your address is going to be your first initial and last name dot mccdgm dot net you may put FTP in front of it but it's not required your username should be your first initial and your last name mine is different because I have so many different servers. Now this, if I were to log in this way, um, marywin.mccdgm.net, this would take me to the root level of my server. And since I have four different classes that I'm working on, I don't want to do that here. My password is the same, regardless of which one I'm signing into. Since I want to create one for my DGM 235 class, that has a separate password that is, or a separate login, that is DGM 235 at mccdgm.net because I created a separate FTP account just for this class with its own login. That's not required. You could have a upper level, root level server declared and just have folders for each class. That's a valid way to approach it. For me, it helps me keep it straight to have a different login for each class. It's a personal choice. Then I'm going to test my server. And that does not look happy. Okay, so I have an error. So when I'm looking for an error, server name's fine, connect using FTP, mary.mccdgm. Oh, I forgot one dgm235 at mary.mccdgm.net and now I'll test. And that's fine. Once it successfully connects, I strongly recommend that you do a print screen of this screen just so that you can save those settings. I have so many different logins, it's hard for me to keep them straight, so I will commonly take a print screen for each class and I have a folder of those just to make it easy for me to remember which one's which. So that's how to create your server. When you're done, you'll hit save, save, done, and I now have a new site full of syllabi should I ever want to upload that anywhere. So if you wanted to get rid of a site, I'm going to go into Manage Sites, and I'm going to go ahead and minus to delete this one, just because it will confuse me if I leave it in there. As you can see, I have several other sites out here that I'm using on a regular basis. So that's how to manage sites. And again, I strongly recommend that you keep track of those settings. I like to do that using a print screen.